welcome back to my channel. Today I've got this little one with me who's looking at me. What do you want? She wants to go on the bed. I'll put her on the bed in a second. Today I wanted to film a different video for you. This is going to be 10 things you should know before you get a Pomeranian puppy. Hey! So before we get started, I just want to say I'm obviously not an expert, I'm not a vet, um, I don't have experience breeding Pomeranians. Pepita is my very first Pomeranian, so I don't know a lot about them and I didn't before I got her, but I have read up on them. Um, and hopefully these tips can kind of help you decide whether or not it's the right breed for you. I think it's the right breed for everyone, they're just so beautiful, aren't you? She's so gorgeous. But yeah, hopefully these will help you kind of make a decision as to whether or not you want one. She's gonna go to sleep now. Whether or not you want one, whether or not they're the right breed for you, um, and why you should get one. So Peppy is five months now. She's currently going through what people call the ugly puppy phase. Um, she's not ugly at all, she's so beautiful. But basically this means that they don't have all their fur um, at the moment they're kind of shedding their puppy fur um, and gaining their adult coat so she has actually changed colour since we got her but I will talk about that a little bit later um, but yeah she's absolutely beautiful such a good girl and we adore her don't we don't we <laughs> Getting started, I thought I would talk to you a little bit about the history of Poms. So, first up, a Pomeranian can live between 12 and 16 years, sometimes a little bit less, um, and they originate from Pomerania, which is actually in the Baltic Sea, um, and it's split between Germany and Poland. Queen Victoria had quite a hand in making the breed popular. They're actually bred down from arctic sledge dogs and arctic herding dogs so the breed used to be a lot bigger and i think they still exist but the breed used to be completely white and a lot bigger obviously to pull a sledge and things they had to be and they're from the arctic and they are a very close relation to a wolf as well but essentially they come into the spitz category of dogs look at her she's just so cute Oh my god. Queen Victoria had quite a hand in making the breed popular in the 18th century. She actually apparently had 35 Pomeranians in her kennels and asked for her favourite Pomeranian to be by her side when she died. Okay, we've lost Peppy. She is now on the bed having a good sniff and she will probably fall asleep in a second. Poms were also, during Queen Victoria's reign, they were bred down to less than half their size. So Poms before were a lot bigger um, and during her reign they were bred down and it's believed they were bred down to be the toy size because when all the women were in their carriages they would have them on their laps and kind of that's where the term lap dog comes from because they would all have them in the carriages with them and they would keep them warm so hence the term lap dog which they are great for everywhere we go. Peppy is on my lap and she always keeps me nice and warm. Number two Poms are the, one of the most varied coloured breeds that you can get. Um, so I have some of the breed colours on here and I'm going to try and go through a few of them. So Peppy is actually a cream pom. Um, cream can vary massively. When we got her, when we met her even, at four weeks old she was pure cream. Um, when we picked her up at eight weeks she was still full cream. And now you can see her colour kind of changing ever so slightly. She's got like an orangey tinge to it or like a caramelly hue, which is beautiful. I absolutely love her colour. Let me... Come here. So this is Peppy's colour. So you can see she's obviously not full cream now. What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> um, she's obviously not full cream and especially on her back, you can see it here. What are you doing, babes? Oh my god, she just wants to play. Yeah, especially on her back, if I hold her up, you can see that she's not cream there. But on her stomach she is, but we absolutely adore her colour. She's kind of going almost honey, honey caramel, that's what we're kind of calling it, which is lovely. You can get them in sable, basically it's a solid base and the sable comes into play via guard hairs. So those are the, the um, longer hairs that come up with like a darker tip or a lighter tip depending. You can get them in red, orange, cream, black, blue, white, wolf sable, which is quite rare I think, chocolate, brindle, which is actually a pattern of colour. Um, the base undercoat will be a light colour, so tan, orange, something like that. And then there'll be stripes running over the colour. The stripes can run thick or thin. Um, 
and on some brindling will only be apparent on the saddle which is the back you can also get them in merle lavender which i don't think is a recognized color it's quite an exotic color um and I think very very rare I've not actually seen a lavender pom I'm gonna google that afterwards because apparently they've got like a purpley hue you can get them in beaver which is somewhere in the brown range this can be as light as a cream or as dark as chocolate and then you can get party poms which basically it's it's not a party pomeranian it's p-a-r-t-i which basically means that um, they come up with a few different colours or they'll have like one patch of white or one patch of something so they're part different colours and actually Peppy's sister was black, brown and white or black, brown and cream so she was a party pom and I think her brother was... what was your brother Peps? I can't remember, I think he might have been like a brown or... no he was orange but um, we were desperate to get a little girl so that's why we chose Peppy and obviously you can get massive variations of all those colours together so it makes for a very varied breed, but mainly you see them in cream, red, orange, um, orangey apricot. I think that's probably the most common colour that I've seen anyway. Number three, breeder. This is so important. I can't stress this enough. I have spoken to so many people since we got her and they've kind of said, I, I remember having a conversation with a lady the other day and I said to her, I was looking for the right palm for a good five years or so. Like, we've been looking for such a long time. It's a breed that I've wanted for such a long time. I just think they're so beautiful, so cute, so playful. And I've always loved them. So I looked for such a long time. And I was having a conversation with this lady the other day saying you have to be so careful about where you get your palm from. Because you don't want to be involved in any kind of puppy farming. And this lady was like, what's what's a puppy farm? What's wrong with puppy farming? And I was like, are you joking? It's horrendous. So essentially what a puppy farm is, is they will have a bitch, a female dog, um, and they will have a couple of males or whatever. It completely depends how many of these dogs they have. Um, and what they will do is they will just breed, breed, breed from that bitch. Um, and the problem with that is that they're not made to have puppies every single year we've kind of developed that and dogs are very different to how they are in the wild now domesticated dogs are so different they don't need to breed every season and they're not built for that a pomeranian is so small it just can't deal with it they can get such bad problems with their wombs um and things like that and it's just it's just not fair to an animal you wouldn't do it to to a human you wouldn't ha say to a human you have to give birth every time you can so every nine months you have to have another baby it doesn't it doesn't work like that, so you can't, it's just cruel to do that to a dog as well. Um, but essentially that's what a puppy farm is, they will breed from the dog um, and as soon as that bitch cannot breed anymore, they'll get rid of it and that's it, they don't, they don't care. They'll leave them at the side of the road. These, these bitches are not well cared for, neither are the dogs. And the puppies can have so many problems because they can be inbred. Um, sometimes you can see that the mums um, some of their puppies they'll breed the two together and it's just it's just awful the whole thing is so wrong um, and I'm so against it so I looked for a long time to find um, the right breeder for Peppy and um, it actually wasn't a breeder it was a family that had just decided to have puppies from their family pet um, they had a friend who also had a pond down the, living down the road from them um, so and this is another thing that's so important. When you go and see your puppy, make sure that you do not put down any money before you have seen that puppy and make sure you are seeing mum. If the puppy is healthy and it's under eight weeks, it should still be with its mother. It is cruel to take a puppy away from its mum before eight weeks. Um, eight weeks is probably the youngest that you can get a puppy. We got Peppy at eight weeks, um, which was fine. It was the right amount of time for her. Um, so that was okay and we didn't really have any problems with her missing her mum too much and things like that. Um, but yeah, essentially the puppy needs to be completely weaned from the mum and all of those sorts of things. Playtime is so important for the puppies as well. If they don't have enough time learning from their mothers or from their siblings, then they won't grow to be properly socialised and they won't know what to do and they, they just won't behave like a normal dog so that's super important and I'll list as well a few links below to where you can find great breeders from. Um, I actually found Peppy 
through Pets for Homes, which is online. I didn't put any money down before we went to see her. She was four weeks old the first time we went to see her and we drove up to Leicestershire to go and visit. At that point, after we'd seen her, we waited a few days and we decided to put down our deposit for her, which completely secured her. And then we went back after eight weeks and we paid the rest of our money and took her home with us. So Pets for Homes is a great one, but again, just make sure you see the puppy. I cannot stress enough how I don't think that shipping a puppy over is okay. Um, the puppy is so young, it's being taken away from its mother and then it has to go across this huge journey in a plane Normally in the hold, if they're flying into the UK, you can't fly in with a puppy on your lap. So this dog will be in the hold. It'll be sitting in its own feces and urine. It's just awful. I just think it's so, so cruel. And if you can go and see the puppy, then do that. We found a really lovely litter of puppies and they were based in Brick Lane. So we called up the lady and said, we can come and see the puppies tomorrow. And she said, oh, I live in Russia, but I can ship over to you. And what really shocked me is she was quite happy to reel off the list of celebrities that she sold puppies to, um, which I just thought was appalling, that these people think it's okay to ship a puppy over. I think if you're going to go and visit the puppy and see it, then that's fine, but I can't stress enough how you should be seeing the mum. Also, if you don't see the mum, you don't know what kind of puppy you're getting. You could be getting, I've heard people before that think they're getting a small pom and they've ended up with a chow chow. So you do need to see mum and make sure it's all completely legit. We actually didn't meet dad, but I did see a picture of dad, so I know exactly what he looks like. Um, I know his name, I know how much he weighs, and I knew who his owner was as well. So that was nice to be able to know. Um, and it's also just so nice to know where your puppy has come from. I think that's super, super important. So the places where I would look is the Kennel Club website. You can find a whole list of um, proper breeders on there. Pets for Homes, Gumtree, and also the RSPCA. If you know you can wait a little while, um, contact all your local RSPCAs um, and all your local animal charities and just say that you're interested in particularly a pom because they, they do come up and I've met so many rehomed poms and they are just so lovely and such a loving nature and they really can be given a second lease of life so yeah do have a look there as well we were desperate to have a pom from the puppy stage I really really wanted to have that whole experience and because Ben had never had a dog before that was what we really wanted that's why we chose to get a puppy rather than rehoming a dog um, but if you are in a position to rehome, then please do that. Number four, this is something I really had no clue about and I feel absolutely awful for not knowing, um, but your puppy will need a harness. If you have a pom, they're a toy breed. The whole pom breed is a toy breed, so they will need to be on a harness and I really didn't know this. So I had Peppy on a collar and a lead pretty much as soon as we got her, but they need to be on a harness because essentially they've got this little throat pipe or the little windpipe um, at their trachea in their throat can essentially collapse if they're on a lead and they're pulling on their collar. Even if they're not pulling, they could just do something or it, it's apparently it takes something so little to collapse this trachea so you have to be so careful with them a harness basically um puts the weight on their back and on their shoulders and away from their neck so um if they pull on the lead and things like that they're absolutely fine um, and they're not going to get hurt and i know you guys if you've seen any of my other um puppy diaries videos you went nuts at me for that and I'm very grateful that you did. Obviously, it's so hard to know that you've done something so wrong and I was so upset with myself, but I genuinely had no idea. So I hope if you are going to get a pom or a toy breed, any toy breed, remember it has to be on a harness. Okay, number five, vets. Please register your puppy as soon as possible. Most of the vets that I've been to and know about have a special puppy club. So Peppy, when we got her, had had her vaccines at uh, Pets at Home um, and they've got a special vet that's kind of off the side of that. But it was all the way up in Leicestershire so we couldn't keep going back there every time we needed something. So we actually registered not far from our house. We just go to a little village vet, which is great. Most of the vets that I've come across have a puppy club, which is, I think you pay a monthly fee and essentially you get free nurse checkups, you get your free worming, free flea treatments, and then you also get um, the vaccines as well and you will get a discount on neutering too. 
um, so that's good to know and obviously all your worries are then taken care of. Ben and I have had a few scares with Peppy um, and Pomeranians as a breed are susceptible to a few things. They can get alopecia which is quite common in the breed which is basically when they lose their hair and I think the skin starts to go like a blacky colour. Peppy doesn't have alopecia. I, I have heard a few rumours that if you cut the fur too much um, that can lead to alopecia. Um, but if you brush them regularly and keep them on a healthy diet, then that should help. Also, if they get too stressed or they're in an environment that they're not happy in, that can also cause alopecia. But sometimes it just happens and it's, and it's nothing that you can, um, and there's nothing you can do but take them to the vets and get special skin treatments and things like that for them. Obviously, we've talked about the collapsed trachea as well. That can be quite dangerous and in some cases can lead to death. I think it's something now that we know a lot about, so it can be treated. So it's not too much of a worry now, but just be aware of that one. And reverse sneezing. So this is something that Peppy has developed over the last week and Ben and I were absolutely terrified when she first started doing it because we, we thought she was dying. Um, essentially what it is is she'll get on all four paws, her neck will extend and it's like she's really gagging, her eyes kind of bulge a bit. It's like she's gagging and she's going to be sick but nothing comes up and it's like she's coughing but not. Um, at first we got so scared and thought it was kennel cough but as soon as we got to the vets we showed them a video and if I can I'll insert a clip of the video here but we got there, showed him the video, he went and spoke to one of his colleagues and came back and said it's nothing to worry about, it's just reverse sneezing and essentially what that is is um, your puppy is trying to sneeze but also trying to inhale and exhale at the same time and it looks absolutely awful. The only thing that I have found that you can do, if you know anything about this please tell me, um, but apparently the only thing you can do is just stroke their throats, calm them down. The worst thing you can do is get stressed because that just makes your dog even more stressed um, and that can make it even worse. But if you just stay calm, stroke their throats, let them calm down, then they just get through it. Um, and Peppy's doing it at the moment about four or five times a day, which is a lot. And it's a lot of stress on her body. So it is worrying. Um, but yeah, we are going to just keep going with that and see how we get on. If it continues and gets worse, we are going to take her back to the vets and see if there's anything more sinister going on. But apparently that's quite common in all dog breeds, which I had never heard of before. I've never met a dog that reverse sneezes. So, number six. Pomeranians are highly intelligent. They are so intelligent, they need a lot of training, and they are very eager to learn. So we started training Peppy as soon as we got her at eight weeks old. Um, within her first week, she had learned how to sit, she had learned how to stay, she gets on on command. So we would, we always, every single time we feed her, we make her sit in her basket, put the food down, and then tell her she can get on. And she is not allowed to go and get her food until we tell her it's okay to get on. Um, this is so important because for your dog to be well trained, it keeps it safe. So when we're in the park and things, and probably actually the most important thing to teach your dog is to come back. I see so many dogs in the park with their owners running after them, trying to call them back. The worst thing you can do, by the way, is to run after a dog when you're trying to make it come back to you because the dog just thinks it's a game and will carry on running away. So the best thing you can do is walk backwards, waving your arms like this and calling your dog back to you because it will come after you as if to chase you. So that's probably the most important thing. Um, so we taught her to come back to us to um, we also we have a whistle and we also call her name. We taught her to sit, taught her to stay, taught her to get on. She can now lie down as well. She walks on her back legs on command, um, which actually is something that Poms do as well, which I should probably mention. Poms love walking on their back legs. It is bizarre and people find it hilarious, but they do it. They just do it. So Peppy started doing it at eight to nine um, weeks so we just manipulated that behavior um, and taught her it's not I've seen people trying to train their dogs to walk on their back legs they put a collar around their neck and lift the lead up so that the dog can't put its paws down that is not how you train a dog to do anything if your dog doesn't kind of do this behavior already organically then don't try and force it don't 
don't be cruel to try and make your dog do tricks. Peppy just did this, so we would hold treats in front of her, ask her to walk, and now on command she will walk on her back legs. Um, she loves it, we know she loves it. She will walk across the road on her back legs if there's another dog across there, or if she can hear somebody saying, oh my god, she's so cute, she'll walk on her back legs over to them. It's hilarious, and people love it, but it's just something that she does and something that the Pom breed loves doing. Poms can also suffer with little man syndrome. So this basically means, it, it's not like a real syndrome, but essentially because they're small, they feel they have to be more mighty. And because Poms are quite loyal, I've seen a lot of them with behavioral problems. So they will growl or bark or try and bite somebody that comes near their owner. A lot of them don't like other dogs. Um, but in my personal opinion, I think all these behavioral traits come from training. We have trained Peppy to be social with dogs, to greet them nicely, to be fine with people. She's fine around noise. We take her everywhere with us. So we, we don't want a dog that has these problems. And the way you do that is just through training. So if somebody comes into the house, treat the dog every single time. Yeah, so if somebody is coming into the house, um, we always give Peppy a treat just so she knows that it's okay. People can come and go and it's fine. Dogs need to get used to rude person behavior. The amount of times Peppy has been picked up by a stranger when I'm still holding the lead is ridiculous. People will come up, you'll be holding her in your arms and people will come up to stroke her and the worst thing is they never ask if it's okay. If you've got a dog that's gonna turn around and bite them, they might have a problem with that. So I just wanted to make sure she was absolutely fine with any kind of rude person behavior. And by the way, you should always ask to pet someone's dog before you go and touch it because it is so rude. And the fact that people actually come along and pick up my dog, I just think like, you wouldn't say to someone, can I hold your baby? You just wouldn't do it. So don't ask to hold my dog. Don't think it's okay to just walk along and pick up my dog. That's definitely not okay. Number seven, Pomeranians have issues with food. Now I know this isn't true for all Pomeranians because I have met a lot that love their food, but it really doesn't matter what they eat. Peppy doesn't love eating from her bowl. Sometimes she'll leave the bowl there and it'll be there for four hours before she decides she wants to eat something. But most of the time to get her to eat, I actually have to feed it to her. And I know that sounds so princessy, but that's just the way it is. And I know small dogs are just like that. So on that note as well, we probably shouldn't have bought dog bowls only because Peppy never eats from her dog bowl. She drinks water from a dog bowl, but she never eats from a dog bowl. We just put her food on a tiny little white saucer from a cup and saucer and she eats it off that which she seems to prefer so you do have to hand feed and it does take time obviously before your puppy is five months old you have to feed it three times a day and when it gets over the five month mark then you bring it down to two times a day which does make it a little bit easier but if you're out and about you just have to feed your dog by hand <laughs> number eight grooming. A Pomeranian does require quite a bit of grooming. Obviously they do keep themselves quite neat and they're a very pretty breed anyway, but they do need their, their claws cut, they need their ears checked, they need their fur brushed. We brush Peppy maybe three, four, five times a week, depending. I try and brush her every day, but sometimes that doesn't happen. And also teeth brushing. Poms can have problems with their teeth and with their gums, and they can get gum disease, so you need to be brushing their teeth. We don't brush Peppy's teeth as much as we should, but that is really important. And you can basically just get a little rubber toothbrush that you just pop over your finger, and then you can just just brush their teeth. They will try and chew it and I'm told you can kind of train them to enjoy it. But yeah, she she doesn't love it. Okay, number nine. Although Poms have a very thick fluffy coat, they get cold. I didn't think this was a, would be a problem. I knew Poms were small, I knew they were a toy breed, but I didn't actually think they would ha have a problem with the cold. Obviously they've been bred down from Arctic sledge dogs and wolves, so I just didn't think they would have a problem with the cold. But Peppy gets absolutely freezing. I always said she would never go in a handbag and she wouldn't wear jumpers and clothes. Um, she's a dog, she knows she's a dog so I didn't want her to have to go through those kind of things. Yeah, so I always said I would never put her in clothes like a baby, but after speaking with the vets and seeing Peppy shivering, I thought I would have to invest in a couple of jumpers, and at first she didn't love it. She doesn't love wearing anything too heavy, um, but her jumpers and things, I actually think she quite likes them now because she knows they keep her warm. So this will be quite an important one. Obviously when they're sleeping as well, we've got quite a warm bed for Peppy and we put a couple of blankets in there as well 
just to keep it nice and cosy and on the really cold nights which we've had a few of at the moment in the UK I do stick a hot water bottle in her bed for her just so I put it at one end of it though so that she's not lying on it or anything like that so she doesn't overheat but just so that she can snuggle up to it if she really really wants just because our flat can get really really cold as well so she has that as an added little extra and on that note as well we have to carry her a lot of the time um it's very cold at the moment so we are contemplating getting like a travel bag for her obviously a lot of places in London aren't dog friendly and I will be doing a blog post on this at some point with all the dog friendly places that you can take your dogs in London but a lot of them aren't dog friendly so it does mean that sometimes we have to sit outside at restaurants and things like that so I am looking to invest in a bag for her I know I said I would never do this again but I just think if we're sitting outside at a restaurant at least she can cozy up in there that's her snug space because at the moment I just have to either have her on my lap which can sometimes Sometimes get a little bit tricky when I'm trying to eat and I've got her balance there or she sits on the chair next to me and then I've just got to wrap her up in blankets because otherwise she gets absolutely freezing so I think having a little travel bag for her would be so good so if you are getting a pom around this time of year then do think about that as well otherwise we just end up carrying her a lot because on busy streets and things like that she's so tiny if I put her on the ground I just worry people are gonna step on her so yeah we carry her a lot and I'm normally wearing a scarf or something like that so I'll just bundle her up into my scarf with me and she's normally quite content there. Number 10 and this is our last final tip or fact Pomeranians are very loyal they absolutely love their owners obviously if you form a good bond with them if you don't then perhaps they're maybe not so loyal I grew up with spring spaniels I still have spring spaniels um, down in my family home uh, which I absolutely love but Poms I found to be such a loyal breed. If any of my friends are hugging Peppy, um, she, by the way, loves other people, loves other dogs, um, and she will bound up to complete strangers and just ask them for cuddles. But the minute Ben and I kind of walk away, she freaks out and she just wants to be back with us. So she does it with both of us. She just wants us to be together the whole time. If I'm walking Peppy and Ben suddenly wanders off to go into another shop or something and I'm trying to walk with her somewhere else, she won't move until he comes back and joins us. So it's impossible. Unless I'm carrying her, she just wants to be with the both of us all the time, which is so sweet and so lovely. Um, it's, it's a nice thing to want to be loved that much. So that's a really, really nice little point on them. Guys, if you have a POM or you have any more tips or little things that you could offer advice on for people that are thinking about getting a POM or maybe already have a POM and just want to know more about them, then please do leave a comment in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. And link me up if you've got pictures of your POM or things like that, or if your POM has Instagram, then please do let me know and pop a link down below. Peppy's Instagram will be in the description box below. Um, so I hope you guys go and follow her because she's so cute. But yeah, from us, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.